Hey folks, welcome back to Civilization VI and our Let's Play of the May 2024 monthly challenge, Reach for the Heavens. When we left off, we had established a very early holy site here, with our plan being to use our religion to pursue a cultural victory. We have a settler on the way to our second location. We're scouting with our spearmen and our scout, and we had a choice to make for our pantheon. I was debating between two, two Pantheon options here. River Goddess, which grants plus two amenities and plus two housing to cities if they have a holy site district adjacent to a river, which we plan to build in all of our cities. Or Lady of the Reeds and Marshes, plus two production from Marsh, Oasis, and Desert Floodplain. Now, I've thought about this and debated it, and what I, the conclusion I came to is Lady of the Reeds and Marshes is a very strong Pantheon, especially on this map. For the early game, we'd get a very strong boost to our early production in cities near marshes. However, the Pantheon kind of falls off in the mid to late game, uh, which the cultural victory we're pursuing may take us into. Because while a three food, two production tile is very good early, uh, later on, mines can provide four to five production plus a food. And with our civilization's unique abilities, farms can provide as many as nine food. So three food, two production will be good, but it will kind of fall off. Whereas having two amenities and two housing in every city will be powerful throughout the entire game. So I'm going to be choosing the River Goddess Pantheon here. That's going to give us a little bit of arrow score. Now, uh, how many turns do we have here, actually? 29 to 49 turns until the next era. That's good. I'd very much like to get a Golden Age for our next era because I would like to pick up the belief that allows you to purchase builders or civilian units with faith and makes them cheaper for both faith and gold. So I'm, I'd like to make that happen if possible. Uh, considering our current situation, our biggest problem right now is our total lack of culture. Uh, that and the fact that we haven't met any other civilizations or city-states. Ideally, I would love to meet a cultural city-state and get the plus two bonus, uh, plus the era score from being the first to meet them, but we haven't found anyone in this chunk of land that seems to be ours, where we seem to be isolated on a coast over here. So somewhere out here, there should be a city-state, but I don't know if other civilizations will have met them first. Uh, it's turn 12, we're at 997 BC. We're currently working on a shrine to try to boost our ability to earn a great profit. Right now, we're 58 turns away. We're the only civilization that is currently earning great profit points, but the AI will catch up quite quickly. We are also earning a fair amount of faith at five per turn, so if we can get enough points and enough faith, we may be able to snatch away the first great profit and found our religion. That's the goal, anyway. Let's go ahead and get started with our next turn. Okay, so this scout is headed east to protect this, uh, protect this site where we'd like to settle our next city and continue scouting to the east. We're going to check the coast a little bit here with our spearman. Uh, we'd like to kind of fog bust and prevent any barbarians from popping or at least notice them uh, if we can before they get the drop on us. Until we have barbarians to deal with, I'd like to avoid building units because I'd rather put that production into other things. But for now, let's hop up on this hill and see a little bit more of the coastline. Okay, not much else to do, so we'll go to the next turn. Okay, we've got a major flood here on the Basak River. That's fine. It doesn't pillage any of our tiles. Uh, two tiles were fertilized. And what happened here? An unmet player has finished building the World Wonder Oracle. All right, so somebody built that incredibly fast. 14 turns? I wonder if that means China's in the game. They seem It seems to me like they're the only ones who could build that wonder that quickly. But I don't know for sure. Hmm. If they're in the game and building wonders, they could provide a serious challenge to us for a cultural victory, so we'll have to keep an eye out on that. All right. Let's have our settler settle on our chosen location. Her Heralaya becomes the first settlement on Ur. That's right, we're on another uh, continent here. That's plus two arrow score. I'm going to rename this city here. Uh, we're going to name this Ripson after one of my commenters. 
who seems to enjoy my Civ 6 playthroughs. If you'd like a, uh, a city named after you, go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know. So, uh, what are we going to do here? Well, this city is going to be building our settlers. As After it gets through the shrine, we're going to build another settler. And then I think we're considering building ancient walls to get the boost for aqueducts. This city, we want it to grow. We'd also like to use this tile because it's better than any of the other tiles after we hit maybe two populations. So I think now there is one science here, but it's only a three yield tile and we don't have a builder to improve the mercury here. So I think we're going to work the food for now. And then once we hit two population, we'll, we'll be working this two food, two production tile. We might get a builder here, getting the luxury online and improving uh, the mercury would be great. But we should do a little bit of planning. Um, we, I think we want our holy site here. The only problem with putting the holy site here is that I would very much like to get the adjacency from having the aqueduct next to it, and I don't want to kill this mercury tile. So, our aqueduct has to be adjacent to our city, which means we could put it here, as this is not a particularly... Well, it is a hill. Um, so I might not want to put it there. If we put the holy site here, I could put the aqueduct there, but then we can't build farms next to it. So, let's see. If I build the aqueduct here, that doesn't really work either. Our only options for the aqueduct are this tile or this tile. We don't have a mountain or, or a source of fresh water here, or I guess we do. And we do, we do need, we do need to prioritize putting the holy site on a river. So I may not be able to get the aqueduct adjacency that I want in this city either. If we put the aqueduct here, I can get one farm adjacency there. Maybe we turn this into a farm triangle. At least I get one there. We could put the holy site here then the aqueduct, and then have a farm triangle, maybe a, a farm quadrangle, possibly, because that, uh, that maze would make a very nice farm. So perhaps that's the way to go. So we, we give up this, this like mediocre tundra hill for the holy site to get very good adjacencies. We put the aqueduct here, and then we have some farms over in this region. That would mean we can chop this... Uh, we could chop this forest as well to gain some early production if we had a builder. So let's let's plan that out. Let's make that our plan here. I don't see the aqueduct going here with the holy site there. And there's no way to get the adjacency with the aqueduct if we place the holy site here. So I think that's probably the best play. We'll put our holy site here. We'll put our aqueduct here. And then these will be farms. This will be another plus five holy site, which is very nice. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place the holy site to lock in the the cost. Uh, when you, every time we gain a new uh, tech or civic, the cost of a holy site goes up, or any district for that matter. But is this what I want to be building right now? It's going to take 54 turns because we're working the food tile. I wonder if I should be working the two food, two production tile instead. Maybe that's six turns to grow here, eight turns here, but we would get two more production as opposed to nothing. What would I work on? I don't think I want to build the, well, maybe I do want to build the holy site. But we want to chop, and I definitely need some builders in my empire. So I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on a builder first. And then we'll get the holy site. We'll use the builder to chop this, get the uh, the mercury, and maybe send it up here to improve a tile for the capital. I think that makes sense. We could also chop this and place a mine. Um, turn that would turn this into a two food, three production tile, and get us some more early production. So that could be a, that could be something. We'll have to think about that once this builder is built. Uh, we are going to get these this gypsum eventually as well. Okay. 
So let's continue uh, scouting the coastline with our with our uh, spearmen. We could come up here, and I think we will, because we'll probably... It's going to take our movement to cross the river anyway, so we might go up onto this hill tile. There's some crab. There's a potential for a coastal city here, possibly. Lots of food there, plus the campus that we talked about. Uh, we'd be on a river, so we could... We could do campus there. Maybe... Holy site there. Aqueduct there, something like that. There's a very there's potential for a nice uh, coastal city here. We'll come back to that idea later. This whole this whole chunk of land seems to be free of the influence of other civilizations, so we can kind of settle it later. Okay, we've got a volcano there, interesting, and another nice crab tile. Uh, it looks like the rice was maybe fertilized. I'm not sure. We are going to need a dam in this city since the flooding is occurring. So we'll have to keep that in mind as well. All right, let's go to the next turn. Uh, hopefully this volcano doesn't erupt and kill my uh, <laughs> my spearman here. Let's cross the river, get to the hill. So I'm pretty sure there's more coast here. I don't think there's like a little island of land or anything. There might be a peninsula, but I don't think so. It's going to be a while before we can scout that unless we... Well, I guess we'll come down through these woods and see. What's happening here? We need more amenities. Now, shouldn't we be getting amenities from our... We should be getting amenities from our... Uh, Pantheon, right? Start era, we gain one. Entertainment, we gain two. Districts, we gain two. Yeah, we have five of three amenities. So wait, who's, who's upset? Oh, Ripson needs more amenities. Interesting. They have zero. I guess that makes sense. When we build this, we'll get two. When we build this, we'll get another one. So I guess you're just going to have to live with your amenity def def uh, deficit for now. Okay, next turn. Let's come down through the woods. Uh, we can see that there's a reef here. I don't, I don't remember how reefs work. They're not in the base game. Let's take a look. Um... Defense modifier 3 and plus 1 food, plus 1 production to the ordinary river uh, ocean tile. It's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. Um, these two crab tiles are much better because coastal cities you generally want to generate gold. Hmm. Okay. Uh, next turn. The Lord made us all out of iron. Then he turns up the heat to forge some of us into steel. There's Ironworking and the Jebel Bar Call. We do have some desert tiles. I'm not sure which would be better to build, the pyramids or this Jebel Bar Call, but it's sort of a moot point now. We're in the very early stages of empire building. So, oops, that was a misclick. I did not mean to do that, but that's okay. Uh, we'll come down to this wheat tile and reveal more of the coast next turn. So with Ironworking complete, what do we want to work on next? Uh, let's see. I might be building a coastal city in the midterm, but not immediately. And this doesn't unlock anything for us. Um, getting the ability to make lumber mills would be very nice. Uh, and I think having, having the ability to make horsemen would be nice, but I haven't seen, I don't see any horses on the map. Possibly as we push east, we might find some. But the fact that there... We found iron, but we did not find any other strategic resources. There's no there's no horses visible. So building horsemen seems... Or researching, researching horsemen seems tricky. I suppose we could trade for some horses. I prefer to research things that are boosted rather than... Things that aren't. Um... We do want to get to Mont Saint Michel, but I believe that's in the Civic Tree. So, what do we want to what do we want to head towards? We do need a dam. Um, machinery would be good, although we don't have any archers. I mean, we are going to get a coastal city. That's the plan. So, I guess I'll work on celestial navigation for now. That will allow traders to embark. Not that we have a trader. I would like to get a commercial hub soon as well. 
Um, do I have the ability? I can I can produce a trader and make a trade route, perhaps between one of my, my cities here. I don't have anyone else to trade with, so it would have to be with one of my cities. But we could get the boost if we built a trader, but we've got so many things we want to build right now. We have pretty paltry gold income, so I'm kind of depending on my scout to find some city-states and hopefully earn some envoys. Um, do we have any envoys? We haven't met a city-state yet, so we don't know. We did, we did complete some early, we got some early text for free, so we have one envoy, I think, in the bank. All right. All right, for now, we'll work on celestial navigation. Okay, our scout has arrived at his destination, so now we have a choice to make. I don't think we want to go down into the tundra. Uh, I would very much like to meet either another civilization or a city-state, so I would like to get some visibility. Moving through marsh doesn't help me, but we'll get more visibility from this hill, and perhaps this tile is grassland, so let's move up here. No such luck, but there are dyes there and some hills here, which is interesting. This location still available for settling. Our next settler is going here. Let's see what we want to do with our spearman here. So far, no barbarians. We'll keep moving down the coast. Uh, perhaps? Well, no, we want to settle on rivers. If we settled somewhere like here, we'd be right on the volcano. So I don't know how we're going to be able to get these fish tiles. I don't think... If we... Well, we don't need to settle on a river. We need to build our holy site on a river, right? Uh, Yeah. Holy sites are granted a major adjacency with rivers, a culture bomb, food, blah, blah, blah. Uh, aqueducts receive plus one amenity. And the Prasat, plus six faith. Plus 0.5 culture for every population. 10 tourism to the city if it's 10. Okay. So we could maybe settle on this plains hill. And then we'd have access to the fish. And we could, you know... Build an aqueduct here, um, and a holy site either here or here. That could work. Wouldn't be the best holy site. It'd be better to settle near these mountain to build it near these mountains over here. We could maybe do that, like holy site here, aqueduct here, city here, possibly. I think that's yeah. I think that's actually worth considering because we would get at least one mountain adjacency plus the river. And then, in terms of a farm triangle, we could we could harvest the deer. No, this is hills, hmm, so we wouldn't be able to build a farm there. Uh, we could do this this triangle here. If the aqueduct is here, we could do that, or we could do yeah, it would have to be there. But I think that's worth pursuing. Let's say we're gonna get a city here. And then an aqueduct here. And then a holy site here. Maybe. It'd be a plus four. It's not bad. Uh, we would not be able to get a water mill, but we would have access to the coast, so we could maybe build a harbor out here. Okay. Okay, okay. It's, I'm seeing some possibilities. <clears throat> Alright, let's go to the next turn. Wow, somebody is somebody is really building a lot of a lot of uh, wonders. So our vo our volcano became active, and somebody built Eta Etamananki. I don't know what that is. Somebody's people are building wall wonders fast. So plus two science and plus one production to all marsh tiles in your empire. Somebody's gonna have a lot of science and production. There are a lot of marsh tiles on this map, at least in our in our neck of the woods. Okay, uh, what do we do with our scout? It's marsh everywhere. There is some, some clear land up here that we could traverse. So why don't we plow through the marsh and come up here, start fog busting a little bit. This could be part of our territory as well, so it's worth exploring. Um... I would like to see this coast tile, but I don't want to get bogged down in these woods. So I'm going to send my spearman up onto this hill. And that's going to be our turn. Uh, nine turns for the builder, 12 turns for the settler. We did complete our shrine, so let's check in on how we're doing here. All right, this is good. 
Nobody else is working on a religion yet. So this this plus two that we're about to have next turn to great to great profit points uh, is quite handy. And our faith generation has gone up to seven per turn. I do need to... St Jesus, how many wonders are these people building? All right. Well, somebody just built Stonehenge, so they sniped the first profit. That's going to delay ours because the cost is going to be higher. You can see here... We have 12 of 60 points. As soon as the Stonehenge civilization grabs their profit, we're going to need more points for the second profit. Wow, I can't believe somebody built that at turn 20. Emperor is the real deal, you guys. Emperor is not playing around. Um, It's okay. We, we've got some things going for us. We're up to 7 population already. Uh, our maximum housing... Is 12 so we can get up to 11 housing which is crazy uh, I should actually check my tiles here what are we working um, if I had any gold I might buy this 2-2 tile but I don't so we're working a bunch of I mean we're working basically all the tiles we can get access to I could take this tile back from Ripson but Ripson's working and it doesn't have another good production tile, so I think we'll leave that. Hmm. Yeah, we need we need to improve some of these tiles for sure. Well, we're already working on a builder. There's not much else I can think of to do. We don't have gold to buy better tiles. Like, and what would I even buy? This stone quarry could be nice. If we could work that. But really, I need builders to get some mines up. I could harvest this for a little bit of production and then build a mine there as well. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's continue scouting here. I think we'll push up onto these hills. Man, we do not... We seem to be totally isolated. There's nobody nearby. Um, I do need to bring my spearmen back now to escort my settler in ten turns. So what are we? We're five turns away? We can afford to do a little bit more scouting, or bust some fog down around here a little bit. Okay. I'd really like for you to meet somebody. Or find- oh wait, there's a- there's a city-state right here. Or is that- Is that a city-state? I think the single dotted line means it's a city-state. Let's see if we can get over there and meet whoever this is. Okay. Uh, there's Ayuthaya. Uh, we were not the first to meet them. We did not get an envoy. They want us to train a swordsman, which we could theoretically do. Okay. We do have one envoy banked. And I think it's very much worth putting a point in here to get plus two culture in the capital. Getting... That would almost... That's an almost 60% increase in our uh, culture per turn. So I will use my one banked envoy on this uh, on this Ayutthaya city state. What is their suzerainty bonus? Gain culture equal to ten percent of the construction cost when finishing buildings. That seems nice. I don't know if we're going to invest in that, but that definitely seems nice for now. Okay, so that's the first civilization other than ourselves we've met, and it is a city state. Um. So if you're here. There could be somebody else here, there could be somebody else here, and there could be somebody else here. I'm not sure where we want to go. Since we're going to settle in this direction, I think I bring the scout down this way. I think that's the plan. I can't do anything this turn. Uh, as for my spearman, I would like to see a little bit more of the tundra. Let's bring him down here. Okay, we're seeing the ice now. The good news is we can traverse the ice very quickly. But I'm now six turns away, so I can't do very much more scouting here. I can maybe get up on this hill, and then I gotta go home. Ah! 한국의 선덕 여왕은 당신을 인정합니다. 우리의 만남은 예견됐습니다. So we've met Sondok of Korea. I am familiar with this Civ. I have not played her before because I don't have the expansion. Uh, but I know she's a science-based civ, and she can snowball very easily if you let her. So we're going to have to keep an eye on her. To st well, she can't. She can't get a science victory. The only cult. The only victory type that's enabled is cultural. But if she gets a lot of science, she could stomp us into submission and build just insane uh, tech. 
Uh, let's get on good terms with her. An appealing offer, Korea, she'll agree. Let's immediately send her a delegation. We welcome the gifts, very nice. And let's see if we can get open borders with her. She wants one gold per turn and two gold to do it. But I think it's worth doing to get on good terms with her. Okay. Do I have anything I can sell her? No. Definitely not. Not yet, anyway. Okay. Um. Alright, let's hop up on this hill. Now that's interesting. There is a river down here. So we could maybe squeak another... Uh, a, a, another city down here later in the game. There's potential for some nice adjacency bonuses with these mountains. There's a river here as well. Um, we will eventually already have access to this iron, so unless there's another strategic resource down here, I don't think I'd rush it. But, you know, we'll, we'll expand out as far as we can to the east, and then we'll start backfilling in some of this other area, and we might end up building some tundra cities. Okay. So... That's Ayuthara. Ayu... Ayuthaya? How do you say that? Ayuthaya? Yeah, I think so. Where is Korea's unit? Who did we meet? Um, and where... Didn't we exchange information on capitals? Where's her... Where's her capital? Where is the unit that we met from Korea? Like, how did we meet her? Oh, did she become suzerain of this city? No, but we might have met her through it. Maybe she popped down on the other side and we met them through here. I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, we do want to send our scout down this way for now because we, we want to settle the city. So we want to know who's close. The city-state doesn't present a threat to us. There may be somebody up here, but we can only scout in one direction. So we're going to send our scout this way. Uh, our meeting with the people of Korea get granted us plus one error score. Okay. Let's go to the next turn. So, by the way, if we take a look here, uh, she has 15 science per turn compared to our six. We do have a, we do have a bit of an edge on her on culture. She has a lot more gold saved up than we do, but look at our faith balance, 63 to her 10. So she's probably not going to get a religion. Let's check in what's going on here. So, I don't know why this is still at 60 points. I feel like whoever built Stonehenge should have gotten Lao Z here. Uh, I guess I'll... How far are we away? We're seven turns. We need to go home, like, right now to be here when the settler arrives. So let's send the Spearman home. We'll do some more scouting with him later. Uh, all right, next turn. Politics is the art of the possible, the attainable, the art of the next best. Excellent. We've unlocked, we've completed political philosophy. That grants us uh, access to the Apadana, as well as Diplomatic League and Charismatic leaguer, Leader and our three starter governments. Apadana could be an interesting one to build, but I need to I need to focus on building my empire right now. I don't have time for wonders. And we have to get Mont Saint Michel, I think. So let's pick our government. Alright, so autocracy, one of each card, plus one to all yields for each government building and palace in a city, and plus ten percent production towards wonders. I would like the plus one to all yields. We don't really need wonder production right now. Uh, Classical Republic does not give us a military slot, but we get two economics. And all cities with a district receive plus one housing and plus one amenity. We don't really need that for this sieve. And plus 15% great person points, we're earning two. So, over the course of 10 turns, what's 15% of 20? Three? We get three, three great person points? Yeah, this isn't super helpful for us either. All land melee, anti-cavalry, and naval melee class units gain plus 4 combat strength and plus 20% unit experience. That's from oligarchy. So I think, actually, 
I think our best bet here is autocracy. We don't need the 10% production towards wonders, but getting plus one to all yields in the capital will be fantastic. And we get a nice spread of card options. So I'm gonna go with autocracy here. That's gonna grant us a little bit of era score and ensure our normal age. Now, what do we want here? I think for our diplomatic policy, we definitely want charismatic leader to earn more influence points. And for our wildcard policies, we definitely want revelation. We want to earn those great profit points as soon as possible. So the remaining question is, do we continue to use discipline here? I could earn another gold per turn if I put in conscription. And we haven't seen a lot of barbarians, but with our culture as low as it is, it's going to be a long time before I can change these again. And as soon as I swap this out, the barbs will spawn. Plus, what am I going to, what else am I going to put in? Unit maintenance, one gold per turn. I don't think that's worth the risk. As for our economic policy, we don't need God King or Corvee. Ilkum and colonization could be really good, though. I do think I'm going to put in colonization here. Because plus one production in, in all cities doesn't help us a lot, whereas this really helps us out early. So I think I'm going to put in colonization. Okay. So that should actually speed up this uh, settler quite a bit. Which means my spearman's going to be late in getting there. The question is, do we send him unprotected or do we bring the scout back? I don't think... Unless a bar pops up from right here, and we're kind of headed in that direction, I think we'll... I think we'll scout for now. So the question is, do I want to go to this tile or this tile? I th think for now we'll come southeast. Okay, that was the right choice. If we'd gone here, we might have been blocked by this mountain range. There's Korea. I don't quite understand how we met them when they were in the fog, but it is what it is. With her being here, that means no barb should be in this area, or at least no barb should be spawning in kind of this area. So it might be safe to send our scout or our settler unprotected. Uh, now we have to pick our next... Uh, our next move here now drama and poetry obviously we're going to want to be building theater squares eventually but i really want to get to mont saint michel um two apostles plus four faith that's not bad but real i really want mont saint michel to be able to have my uh to be able to have my what are they called? They're not prophets. They're, uh, oh my God, Mer not mercenaries, uh, missionaries and <sighs> apostle to be able to have my apostles generate relics from combat for tourism purposes. So we want to go for divine right. So what's involved in that? That's seven civics away. That's a long way away. And it looks like our first stop would be drama and poetry anyway. Uh, followed by games and recreation. So let's, let, let's, let's go for drama and poetry for now. That'll take us 10 turns. And then if we can get the construction technology, that would boost our next necessary civic. So we'll keep that in mind. Where's construction? If we could build a water mill, we could boost that and then research it next. I have to keep that in mind. Okay, uh, Korea Scout is blocking our path here, unfortunately. And the fact that she came from down here means Korea's probably in this area, and if there were any tribal villages, I'm not sure if there were any and we just didn't find any, or if they're not part of the game, uh, setting. But there's, there's land to be explored down here, and we probably need to get this city online uh, right after this city to stop her from forward settling us or to capture as much of the land towards her as we can without angering her. So there's not a lot I can do here with the scout this turn. If I move here, then I just have to move back here next turn and presumably she's gonna move. So I'll just skip my turn here. We'll see, yeah, she moved, okay. So let's come up here. Very big mountain range here, very big long mountain range, kind of protecting us from the east. That's actually pretty good. She may have looped down around, so she may not be able to get here very easily. And if we settle a city here, well, we're, we have open borders with her, so she'd be able to move through it. But we want to we capture this territory ASAP. 
I'm still okay with Ripson, but I almost kind of wish I'd built this one first. Uh, let's come down here to the wheat. Yeah, these rivers are fantastic. She may not want to settle the tundra either, so she might not be in a rush to come down here if we claim the, these grassland tiles. Okay, there's our settler. I think we take the risk here. I think it's safe to send it directly. Yeah, we can't see any enemies. And I'm going to pop up on this hill to continue scouting. Okay, there is more tundra down here. So this may be unappealing to her. Because she would have to come down and around to get to any city. She settled to be right for... Like, she's going to have loyalty problems. I don't think anybody's going to be coming down around here. I think this whole kind of patch of land is ours for the taking, which is really interesting. Kind of gives us a chance to just sim city in isolation without worrying about early combats or wars. Hmm. Uh, so, Anchor Thom is working on ancient walls to boost the aqueduct tech. But I wonder if I should switch to a water mill here. To boost our ability to reach Mont Saint Michel, we've already put some work in. It's five turns to get the ancient walls. The thing is, it's nice. It's a nice boost for engineering. We don't. It doesn't seem we need the walls to defend ourselves. Although, if barbs spawn, that they, they will be nice to have. I think we'll let these finish and then we'll reevaluate after the walls are complete. I might want to get another settler here rather than go for the water mill. Hmm. Yeah, it's a tough call. The water would mill would be nice to boost uh, games and recreation. It is the 16 turns, and we're six turns from completing this. So maybe we get the settler and then the water mill, and we and we work on construction. I don't think we can get all of that done before we research that, though. So maybe it's. How would we get to construction? We have to have horseback riding first. Okay. And all I ask. All right, there's celestial navigation. Eventually, we're going to use this, but we don't need it right now. Uh, let's go scout Korea, I think, with our scout here. I want to know how close she is. It's the right way to do this. Oh, yeah, I want to know how close she is. Okay. Four turns for the walls here, one turn for our builder. Uh, we definitely are going to work on horseback riding next. Okay, so we didn't need you to escort our settler, but the next one we might. Let's see. We should plan out our next river, or not our next river, our next city. So let's go to settler view here. Uh, well, we should we should wait until this city is settled. What do we want to do with this spearman, though? I don't really know what to do with him. I guess I should use him to scout, but I'm worried about leaving... Maybe we'll just have him pop down. How long would it take him to get there? Six turns? Where else can he scout? There's more open land up here. Uh, there are rivers to cross, though. Five turns to get here and get a little bit of visibility across the river here. Or six turns to get here and explore some more tundra. I, I don't know that we need to explore the tundra, but I think sending him north would be fine. We'll bust some of this fog. We haven't been back here in a while, so we'll prevent barb camps from spawning. And if we need to call him back, we can. So I'll send him up there, and we'll go to the next turn. All right, so... Uh, there is some nice land over here, but I don't want to get too greedy. It would be very difficult. Uh, we need to focus on settling this entire kind of, like, isolated area that's ours. And we might need to send somebody up here if there's another sieve up here. It depends. So actually, sending our, our spearmen up there is probably a good call. But there's some nice grassland river stuff over here. So eventually, maybe... 
Let's have you settle our third city. All right, uh, Lingapura. Very nice. We have a very nice tile to start with. A uh, couple of couple of very good growth tiles, but uh, as we knew was going to be the case, we're going to be a little bit low on production until we can get some mines up and running here. So what do I want to build here? Uh, we'd like to get that tile and that tile, the two hills. Um, I mean, we are going to grow pretty quickly here. I think we'll work this tile first. Uh, for the three food, one production instead of two, two. To get up to two population. And then, and then I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. But what do I want to build here? We're going to need production, so you might actually benefit most. Because you already have, like, you have five housing. But I do, okay, I do need to, <clears throat> I do need to figure out where my holy site and aqueduct are going. So let's work on that. Um... We don't have a mountain nearby for adjacency. Unless I bought, like, a tile. Um, we have mountains over here. But I want both of these tiles for production. And I might even want this tile for production as well. So, yeah. Uh, we could put it here. And get the mountain adjacency there. One, two, three. We could theoretically put it there, but... I don't have the money to buy the tiles. And I'd like to get it placed down early to lock in the cost of the district. Um, we don't really... Well, we could use a builder here to get a mine and the quarry. I might not harvest this. I might actually uh, improve that since production's so hard to come by in this city. But where would we put... Let's see. I could put an aqueduct here. I'd like to preserve this maze if possible. Uh, one benefit of settling on the maze is we get an additional two gold per turn, which is good. But if the... The aqueduct has to be adjacent to the city, so the aqueduct could be there. Could be there. Could be there. Could be there. Could be in any one of those four tiles. I don't want to put it on the, the hill. I don't want to put it on the... Uh, the maze. Or on the rice, for that matter. So maybe the aqueduct goes here. And then the holy site goes here. Which would mean I need to buy this tile right now to do that. And I don't really want to spend the gold on it, but I want to lock in the production cost. So if we go aqueduct here, then we don't really get any benefit from the... the aqueduct's uh, farm adjacency bonuses. Whereas if we go aqueduct here, we could have a couple of different things. Yeah, a couple. We could get a farm here, farm here, maybe a farm triangle like this, and then another one like that. Those three. So if we put the aqueduct here, and then we put the holy site here, maybe? And then we have farm triangle. Yeah, there's wheat over here, too. And then, like, farm triangle here. So Anchor Thon gets one. I think... <clears throat> actually, that would make this incredibly productive. Because these would be getting the adjacency bonus. And then... These would be getting the adjacency bonus. Yeah, maybe we go Aqueduct here. Holy Site here. And then this would be an incredibly productive tile. As with this and this. And then maybe I don't need another farm triangle down here. Because I can, I could be using this. We're gonna harvest this marsh, maybe. Yeah, I think, I think that's the best play. Uh, one other thing I could do. No, no, I can't. I can't get over here. Well, actually, if I put the holy site here, but then that interrupts the farm triangle idea for for this city. So, no, I think, I think we have our plan. Our plan here. Uh, we're gonna have aqueduct here. And holy site here. It's not going to be the greatest holy site in our empire, but there's not a lot I can do about it. I could move it here to get a 4-4. Four, four. I'm not sure if this is taking the... We'll get extra faith from the aqueduct itself because it's adjacent to the holy site. 
I sort of think that's the best I can do. This farm triangle is going to be amazing. We might just have a farm here, which would get the benefit of adjacency and not necessarily need to be a farm triangle. Or we might, we might grab these two as well. I'm not sure yet. But that means I need to put the tile here. How much is this going to cost me? 80 gold? Yikes, that's all my gold. I think we might wait on... Hmm, I think we might wait on buying that until maybe we can get, like, the... Yeah, we might wait on buying this. As for this city, I think we want to get a builder here because I'd like to get more production going. Okay. Uh, we do have a builder here, and we definitely want to get our Mercury online. We want to chop out our holy site. Uh, we have also hit two population here. So I definitely want to be working that tile. And if I build the mine this turn, I'll get more production from this tile. So let's get our let's get our uh, our Mercury mine online here. That's now a one food two production tile plus one science. So working that is fine. And we'll figure out what to do with him next turn because we've reached the end of the episode. So uh, that's going to be it for this time, guys. We've got some plans. We've got some potential challenges. We haven't met a lot of people. We don't see the barbs for some reason. I'm still iffy about this, but it seems like the best play. Like, this isn't the greatest holy site, but it will have a really big impact on the food availability here. And then we can focus on production in the capital. Because it'll have three incredible food tiles to support itself. And then this city is going to need some help. It's going to need this builder. Alright. <clears throat> Got another city planned there. We need to figure out where the next city down here is going to go. We need to start expanding up this way as well. Uh, once our walls are done here, we have to figure out whether we're going to build a water mill or another settler. We're scouting with our spearmen. We're scouting with our scout. All things considered, I think we're, make, we're doing pretty well for 30 turns in to have three cities and plans for more. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for this time. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you're enjoying this playthrough and my thought process as I explain the decisions that I make in this fantastic 4X Grand Strategy game. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.